All right, so I have some six inch pieces of one by two eighth inch thick wall tubing. I want to weld to this original. So basically the bed used to sit down on this railing and it can't do that now because the V twin is so huge. So we got to lift the bed up and uh, I mean, it may look weird. You may see inside here, but I can put some ABS plastic or something to keep it, you know, you from just seeing in there, but I think it's going to be fine. So I'm going to tack these up. Then I have the rails. I need to lay and find the slant that I need to cut up here to meet this tube. They'll basically be fully welded here, fully welded, welded there, so it's gonna look good. All right, so I got this rail made, and I went ahead and drilled a three quarter inch hole. I have some three quarter inch pipe that will slide right in this and has a one, a half inch inside diameter so that I can slide it in there, weld it, and give a good strong set up for the bed to latch down onto a few moments later this mule is full of dumb decisions uh look at how dumb that looks <clears throat> so my point of raising the bed i raised it too much let's face it but i was only supposed to raise it like five inches and i raised it like seven inches but it looks stupid i think way too high i mean if you was to load anything heavy you'd be picking it up a belly button level so ah, i don't like that my my goal with this was let the bell, bed still tilt <clears throat> and then build toolboxes above the tires that stay there so you'd have like almost like a flatbed truck but i think it looks stupid with the bed up that high so what i'm going to do is remove the bed cut those extensions off and i'm basically going to cut a clearance spot in the bed right here cut a section out where the engine can go up into that area there's not a ton of movement where the carbs at the carb hat is the problem how high the carb sticks up so we're going to cut the center of this bed out up here against the back and rebox it in with steel so it's still waterproof and everything you still throw dirt in it and stuff and it won't get on the engine but it allows that engine to flex at max flex so what we'll do is ratchet strap the suspension all the way down and start modifying the bed to make that work so we'll show you what it looks like and the process we have to go through. So let's cut everything I welded on off. Day's worth of work, gone. So what I'm gonna do is measure 12 inches in and start my cut from 12 inches in on both sides. I can measure how far down I want it to go. So basically there'll be a, a square cut out of this for the engine to come up in. Then I can do some, I can bolt this back plate back in and uh, then weld all this in. Because now if we drop this, it starts interfering with the carb about right there. And this is at max squat. So this is a worst case scenario. So I want to cut it wide enough to give us enough clearance. We're still going to have plenty of bed at the end of the day. That's the only way I see to do it. I don't see how other people fit beat twins in without either lifting the bed or modifying the bed like this. So I need to cut it back probably about three or four more inches, but that's what it looks like. So once the back <clears throat> is back on it, then we can start building the sheet metal form and uh, get this thing done. But it's going to be pretty cool because it gives you a little scoop to hide everything. We can do our, our exhaust right under there, head wrap it. Like I said, this is at max flex, so it can't go up any further than this. So just got to make sure we give it rocking clearance, you know, where the engine can rock back side to side and uh, we'll be good.
beds all back on the mule. And there's a little little panel. It looks good, I think. I didn't think you still have plenty of space to haul things. Yeah, that bed is still massive. And then if you go up here, they're like a little dog house. And this engine squatted all the way. So there's like inches in between that. So looks pretty sweet. And we lost, we actually probably added strength to this bed once it was fully welded. I think it looks pretty sweet. Turned out good. Job well done. Thank you. All right, so we got the mule exhaust all done up. It's really nice and it has a removable baffle. The bed doesn't get anywhere as close. I think it's like five inches from the exhaust when you drop the bed. And we've tested when we did the exhaust, we had the suspension collapsed all the way down at max squat. So we don't have any issues. Uh, now we can header wrap that exhaust. And on the next episode, you will see us drive the old mule ski. We're gonna do rear brakes, uh, finish up a little bit of wiring to the throttle cable and get it all done. I need to fully weld that little doghouse but it's turned out really nice. And I'm also gonna build a little removable shield that covers the engine from your hiney quarters. So uh, as you can see, the engine pokes out right behind the seat. So we're gonna build a little shroud, insulate it, so you won't feel any heat off that and it blocks any junk from coming from the backside. So mules turn out really nice. After the next episode, she will be done and be ready to disassemble the whole back section and paint it. We're gonna do hydraulic disc brakes from Go Power Sports. We're gonna use 150 rear calipers. So we still have the manual e-brake and uh, do their i think eight inch rotors on it so it's going to be really nice so stay tuned to the next episode guys thank you so much for watching check out the links to everything we've thrown on this bad boy this mule is going to be one of the meanest mules it's going to have uh, almost 30 horse and have an eight to one diff she's going to haul the mail so thank you guys for watching we love you and god bless